Good morning, everyone. I'm sure most of you don't know me, so my name's William Matama. I'm looking after Kiri Kiri um, Little Church Plant up there, and also Takao. Previous, I was in Palmerston North for eight years, um, looking after Palmerston North Church. And then I moved up here just last year. So that's basically my little background of ministry. Um, yes, I am married, um, got five kids, and so they're all growing now. And yeah, the last one's just finishing off school this year. So I think I'll be a bit free now, eh? Sounds good. <laughs> um, what are we doing up in Kiri Kiri, eh? Well, it's not that easy up there. <laughs> it's pretty hard going. Um, people really don't want to know about Jesus, you know? And I went up there and I said to the Lord, wow, what are you, what are you doing with me? <laughs> How come I'm up here? I don't know anyone here. You know, it's going to take a long time to get to know people to win people's confidence. And anyway, I was at the gym. I was at um, the gym in the local community gym in Kiri Kiri. And I said, I, I started looking at the trainers there and they were talking to everyone and anyone. And I said, man. Maybe I need to open up a gym so I can talk to everyone and anyone and just go, you know, because you don't want to go in the gym and work in the gym and then go and talk to a young lady, you know. She might go, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you don't want to, you know, you just don't want to do that. Eh? So you just kind of keep to yourself and exercise. So we started up a gym. Um, and just within that one year, it's basically one year now, we know a lot of people in Kiri Kiri now. A lot of them don't know God. And you know the one thing that they say when they muck around with us? They say, man, we don't need to have alcohol to have fun, eh? And that's where my sermon's going to come into, okay? So let's just bow our heads. That's enough storytelling. Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, that you are our God. Pour your spirit upon us today. Speak to my heart, Lord. Remind me of your love. And may each one here, Lord, be blessed by you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm looking at Mark chapter 4. So if you turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 4. You see, it's good that I don't know anyone here, really. So I don't know your spiritual condition. And so I'm not bringing the nuclear bomb. Okay, I'll just give you the milk, all right? Just the milk. So you can just soak that up. All right. If I knew the condition, maybe I needed to bring the nuclear bomb, eh? And explode and then let Andrew... Oh, is it Andrew? No? What, what is it? Adrian. Adrian, that's right. Let Adrian fix it up and mend it, eh? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but it's only milk today. Okay, Mark chapter 4, okay? And we're going to verse 21. Verse 21, and this is Jesus speaking, and he says, Also he said to them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? So here is a question that Jesus is asking, and he's saying, What is the lamp brought for? What is the lamp's job? Is it to be put under a basket, under a bed, 
or is it to be set on a lampstand? Now I'm sure as I'm looking at you, these are all intelligent people. There might be a couple who, you know, but it looks like you are pretty intelligent, eh? And you make me scared. Because you know what a lamp is supposed to be for, or a light. Is it to be put under a bed or on the lampstand? You're allowed to talk, mate. Lamps and thank you. We got one intelligent person here. The rest will catch up. Okay, so here the obvious answer is put it on a lampstand. And you're thinking to yourself, Jesus, why are you asking this simple question when everyone in the audience knows the answer, but only one person answers it? Why? And then he goes on in verse 22. For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. Here I kind of look at this lamp, and I say to myself, I'm that lamp. You are that lamp. What are you going to do with that lamp? Are you going to put it under the bed? Or are you going to put it on the lampstand? You've got a choice here. What does a lamp do? What does the light do? It what? Shows us the way. It eliminates the dark, right? You turn on the light and darkness disappears. Keep that thought, right? But also the lamp in verse 22, it says that there is nothing hid. <coughs> nothing is hidden which will not be revealed, meaning in the dark you probably are stumbling over things that you left on the floor or you can't find your item because it's dark. So everyone will go and turn on the light to find, um, try and find what they're looking for. I actually flew off the plane in Auckland last night at 9.30 and then I got up to up here about... I know, half past 12, and I just slept in a hotel. <laughs> That's why my wife and my children ain't here with me. Oh, why did I say that? There was a point there. It was because when I went into the hotel, it was a room that I've never been in, so I looked for the light switch, and the light came on, and I saw the bed, and I saw where I'm supposed to put my stuff. You see, the light makes everything seen. Are you with me? The light of God in our life also reveals the sin in us. You know, sometimes the secret things that we know are sin and darkness that lives in us, you know, sometimes we have it in that little corner of our hearts and when it keeps nagging us and it's there, you know, sometimes it may be adultery, eh? Sometimes it might be stealing at workplaces or lying or gossiping. And it's all there. But the light of God is so amazing that it lights that darkness up and it reveals it in our lives. And it helps us to do something about it. But if the light's not switched on, then we have a problem. Not only that, a lamp is to be put on the lampstand, my friends, so that it can illuminate the darkness and it can dispel it and take it away. And we are this lamp. 
We are this lamp that God says, you are the light of the world, ain't we? The light of the world. So as I look over here, I say, wow, there's so many people here in Whangarei Church compared to um, Kirikiri, eh? So there's many lights here. Many, many lights here. But if we are all lights and shining in the light here, where the light's already here, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the use of having it? When the light is for the dark places. I remember driving up from Auckland to Rafferty one night with my brother. I was on my Pajero. And I was driving up, this was many years ago, and um, we we're going to visit my brother there and do some fishing up here. And I'm driving on my Pajero, and between somewhere, I don't know, before Whangarei, the, the lights go out. The lights just go out, and it's dark. <laughs> and so we pull over the side of the road, try and do something, and it doesn't go on. And so we've got this little torch with two AA batteries in it. And then my brother sticks it out the window and it's shining it like this. And so I just wait until I find the car in front of me with its red lights and I speed up to it and I catch up and I just drive behind that. And then I come to one of the petrol stations to find out what was wrong. And because we've got our little AA battery t torch, you know, we can't really see what was wrong with it but we said wow well, let's just keep going eh and you know the turn off into Rafti is Okura is it that turn off there um, it's a windy road and there's no street lamps there you know so it's pretty dark but we just keep going and my brother's looking out the window and sometimes when I turn the light goes on you know and it was like, just going on at the right time. Then it'll go off. Anyway, we made it to Rafati, you know, it didn't hit any in the side of the road or whatever. And we looked at it and it was the um the what do you call it? Um the alternator. I don't know. But without that little light, eh? <laughs> Even though it was so little. My brother was saying, yep, you're all right. <laughs> Keep going. Sounds like I was a bushman, eh? <laughs> and anyway, we made it there, eh? We made it there. That was the point because of that little light, eh? But God calls us to be a light, eh? Because there is a lot of sin outside in this world. There are a lot of people living in darkness who don't even know Jesus. And he calls us to be the light of this world. He says, you're this lamp. What are you going to do? Are you going to put your lamp under this bed or under the basket and you're going to cover it up and you're not going to let this great light which people want to see be exposed? And so, because I've been a minister for quite a while, I understand that Adventists like congregating together. They just love it. It's really great. It seems like they lose contact with the outside world and they have, don't have so much friends outside because they all kind of clump together. It, it's not a bad thing. But there is one issue is that there are people out there that need to see your light shining in their midst. And I kind of get this concept and I kind of say, wow, just like the gym, there are people who don't even believe in God, atheists. People who love to party. And I invite them to come to Kiri Kiri Fellowship. Some of them come, some of them tell me straight, that's not my stuff, will he? No, that's your stuff, you know, keep me out of it. And I said, that's all good. So I use another tactic. 
I say, let's go for a run or something. I can't run, I just walk. <laughs> let's go somewhere and, and so they run and then we'll go and meet at a cafe or something. Then we go there and then one of my little devotionals that I've read in the morning, I kind of try and use it in a parable of modern day terms which they think I'm just telling a story. And then after that I go, well guys, since you don't come to my church, you know, and listen to me, I thought I'll just give you the sermon today, eh? And so this was from the Bible, and they, they just laugh because, but you know, you're planting that seed, because that's the next point. What are you doing with your lamp? Are you just shining it with, with many lights? There are people living in darkness and sin that God wants us to take that lamp there. And then he says in um, verse... 26. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. So here Jesus goes from the lamp and then he goes to the seed that's scattered on the ground. And he says you don't know how it grows. You don't know where the life of the seed comes up out of the ground, pokes its little head out of the ground and starts to sprout and have these two little green leaves side by side of each other. But it's growing very small, insignificant at first, but then it starts to grow and then it starts to yield crops. And Jesus is saying that you are the lamp of the world. But go now with the seed and scatter the seed everywhere. In those dark places. In the ground. And guess what? You don't know how it grows. It's not your responsibility to look and say, I gave you a Bible study, mate, but you're not giving your heart to the Lord. Come on, matey. Wake up. You know, when I first started giving Bible studies to people, I will sit on the edge of my seat and I go, Come on, mate. <laughs> God is speaking to you. <laughs> Give your heart, you know. I was just really enthusiastic and just kind of really trying to get, and I was like, please, you know, just pleading with them. But now I'm kind of more relaxed and just share the Bible and let God's word germinate in their own lives. It's not me. I don't have to worry about... God's word growing in their life. God says he's responsible for the results. Ellen White says, not me. But just go and spread the seeds. Spread the seeds, my friends. You don't know how it grows. You don't know what the seeds will do. Maybe you're looking at this rough man and you're going, oh, wow, that fellow's not going to give his heart to the Lord. Look at his mouth. It's filthy. You just never know. It's not your responsibility for the conversions. God makes it grow. It's very interesting, eh? That he comes into chapter 5. And in chapter 5 he talks about this madman. who lives in the tomb with an unclean spirit, tied up with chains. But he breaks them and people in the town are scared of this man. This is the best that Satan can produce, is a madman. 
People who are going to be scared of him. <coughs> running away. And no one wants to go and help him out. All they want to do is chain him up and lock him up. And this guy is in the depths of, uh, of the devil's strongholds. And he's living in great depths of sin. And no one can help him. So everyone in the village keeps away. And here Jesus comes on the boat. The light of the world. And he comes and he sees this madman in the darkness of Satan's hold. And the light comes and this darkness of this, this Gadarean man sees the light. Bang! It's really interesting what Jesus is doing here, eh? He's telling the story about the lamp. He's telling the story about the seed. Then he also goes in verse 30 and he tells about the parable, okay, about the mustard seed. When it's sown, it's only the smallest, but after it, it becomes the biggest of all those other herbs. And then the birds come and lay their, um, they come on it, rest on it. It becomes a shelter for everyone. You see, small beginnings with God very small. And here the disciples, I imagine, they look at this, um, this madman, you know, demon-possessed man, and they're scared. I know what it's like. In Fiji, when I was over there, um, you know, there's these students getting possessed. This Indian girl, eh, and she was only little, and she was pretty strong, pretty strong. Well, she was little, but when she was possessed, she was pretty strong. And one day I was there, and I, I walked to the um, pastor's house, you know, because we're students and we want to feed, <laughs> you know, so we go pretend we're doing visitation, pastoral visitations. <laughs> so we go, knock, knock. <laughs> and pastor opens the door, and he says, come on in. <laughs> and so me and my other mate go, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, he, you know, he, he's praying over this, this girl, you know, and she's like a, like a pit bull, right? and slapping the floor, and I'm there, and, I, and he goes, pray, guys, pray, so, okay, then, so we turn around, and I'm praying, and my feet is facing her, and all I hear is this pounding on the floor, you know, and I think she's kind of, like, like, crawling to me, and I'm going, oh, no, she's going to grab my feet, and she's going to fling me over the, the room, you know, so I open my eyes, and I turn, and I move my feet the other way, <laughs> It's pretty scary stuff, you know. <laughs> but Jesus sees that even the worst that Satan can produce, God can save. But you just need the light to be present there. And Jesus shows this in the Gadarean man, you know, this, this madman. He's saying, look, I showed you that I am the lamp. You can either hide it, you can either be among many Adventists, which is not bad, it's still good. But if you're not going to produce your light where the light is really needed in the darkness, then friends, your lamp is in a basket. You don't have to go among the friends and start talking about religious things, my friends. You just need to be that light where they can see your example. You just need to be that light where they can see that, you know, the gym eh, is closed Friday sunset, you know, Sabbath. And they go, come on, Willie, open up the gym. You know, and we go, no, that's my church day, guys, sorry. <laughs> and they go, why do you go to church on Saturday? It should be Sunday. I said, oh, read your Bible, guys. You know, but it's good. We have a dialogue. Jesus, my friends, said, I am the light. And he showed it towards this madman. But not only that, he says, I'm scattering my seeds. And he scattered the seeds, my friends, to this madman. And the seed landed smack in his heart. And he knew that there was hope in Christ. You see, if everyone's living in the dark, my friends, who are they going to see? 
to have the light. Why do some of the gym people now come to me and ask me for advice on marriage, on divorce, on drinking? Why? I don't tell them much about the Lord. It's because you shine your light there and let it glow for Jesus and they know that you are different. Opportunities will come. So when I invite them to come to Kiri Kiri Fellowship, a lot of them do come. Isn't that amazing, eh? Have they given their heart to the Lord? No. What am I trying to say here, guys? What's a lamp? Is it to be put under a shelf or to be hidden? Or is it to be put on a lampstand so that you can eliminate the darkness? I'm sure that madman was really happy when Jesus came. Even though no one believed that he could change. But the light of the world came into his life. You look at Paul. Paul was in the heart of Rome. Rome, they hated Christians. Rome persecuted Christians. Rome was a tough place for a Christian. They lost favour with their work. They lost favour with the government. It was a tough time there. But Paul shone his light. And when they persecuted Paul, you know what Nero did? He had a private killing for Paul. Because he was too afraid that if he opened it up to the public, that even the death of Paul would have converted many to Christ. He understood it. Hide the lamp. Hide the light. Because if he exposed it, then many more would have come to know Christ. Martin Luther in the heart of the Roman Catholic Church with all its dignitaries standing there. Recant, recant. And here Martin Luther shone his light for Christ. And everyone was looking in the public galleries and there many were converted for the Lord. I've got this Facebook page called Northern Intellectual Discussion. I'm not too intellectual, <laughs> but it's my page. <laughs> and guess what? I've got a lot of atheists on there, evolutionists, you know. And we discuss, talk about God. They run down God. They talk about evolution, the proof of evolution, the scientific facts of evolution. Very interesting discussion, very interesting. And I wondered, why are they, why don't they believe in God? And you know what it comes down to? It's not really about the scientific facts. It's because they just can't believe in a God who will let suffering continue. They don't believe in a God because sometimes of our Christian attitudes towards them. 
And so these are just excuses to help them hold on to these evolutionist beliefs. We need to be that light. I let this one girl in and I think she might be an Adventist and she's actually been a pain in it because she's actually writing all these things, which is truth and all that, but being very hard-headed and trying to just write truth so that these people, you know, can believe. And, and I'm thinking of really seriously deleting her <laughs> and blocking her because it's not helping. We were kind of getting to a point where we were going to meet. I haven't met these people before. Going to meet in a calf and just have a have a talk about their beliefs and my beliefs. But now it seems like it's all undone. <laughs> so I have to patch it up again, eh? It takes time to build relationships. And it takes people to trust you. But they can only trust you if you shine that light in the dark places. Shine it, you'll have fun. Your Christian life will, will explode. You won't be sitting down and just going, hello, hello, hello. They'll be saying, come on, let's go here, let's do this, let's, let's do that. And you'll go, yeah, okay. <laughs> and you'll kind of live life again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, you know, just getting a bit too excited here. You're reaching people who don't know Christ. It's amazing. It's amazing. They said I could go to a half pass and it's only five pass. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm running out of words. <laughs> so I'll sit down soon, eh? But all I want to say, guys, is this. Let the word of God, when you go in chapter 4, in verse 1, the sower went to sow seeds, and he threw it here and there. Some fell on good ground, some fell on the roadside, some fell on thorny ground. And when you tie up all of chapter 4, don't worry about where your seeds go. Because some of them will fall on good ground. And they'll bring life. Just like that madman. It would change him. Has anyone given their life to the Lord in Kirikiri since opening that, that gym? No. But they, do they see and respect Seventh-day Adventists a little bit more? You know what? They didn't even know what a Seventh-day Adventist was, to be honest. <laughs> but now they do. And I just pray that they will be our defenders of our church. When someone says, oh, those Seventh-day Adventists, they blah, 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 you know, they'll go, no, I know a minister of the Seventh-day Adventist church. Shine your light, friends. Shine it bright. Don't be afraid. Pray the prayer of Jabez in 1 Chronicles 14. Pray that prayer. God bless me indeed and enlarge my territory and guide me by your hand that I may not. What is it? Commit evil and cause pain. Enlarge my territory, Lord. God will do it, friends. He will. And that's basically the end of my sermon. So whatever you take from it, God wants you to shine. Don't just shine in here, friends. Don't just come and be theologians in here. Don't just come and go, you know, some of us, can I just, anyway, I was going to finish. Some of us got hobby horses, eh? I don't know, I might not never come here again, so I'll say my last piece, eh? <laughs> um, some of us got hobby horses. 
I don't know what hobby horses you've got, but some of us, you know, and we think that that's the truth that everyone wants and needs. And so we just drill it on so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so, and, -so and, -so, and we just go, leave me alone, you know? Don't get too mixed up in that. Just get to know Jesus and let Jesus shine through you. Like Paul says, I don't want to know anything else. Only Jesus. Everything else is like dung. But give me Jesus. Let him shine in you, God. In, in us friends and you know what those who are living in the darkness will see wow I want some of this so I'm going home today to Kiri Kiri and this afternoon we said because my son he's, he got engaged very quick just on labour weekend Oh, yeah, Labor Weekend. And then he's getting married in January. <laughs> That's pretty fast, eh? <laughs> anyway, they've been there for a while. But we said, let's have a, what do you call it? Engagement um, party. And let's invite people from the box to come. So when they come, we can say our prayer for them and we can shine our light. And every time we gather together, these are people from the gym. They know we always say a prayer. They know that we always bless our food. Shine your light, friends. It's so exciting to live in the real world. I wonder why Jesus had so much fun with sinners, prostitutes, what else? Um, tax collectors, hey? When he was with the Pharisees, he got ho -ha with them. He called them vipers. Why? Because they're too religious in a sense of trying to be, no, this is the way you do it. But Jesus had fun. Come here, blind man, I'll heal you. Come here, Zacchaeus, look, you're a sinner, you thief. But guess what? Come here, I'm going to your home. And Zacchaeus changed. God wants to work miracles in your life. Let him do it, friends. Just shine your light. Sow the seeds. And guess what? That mustard seed will grow and become a big tree that people will flock to you and just want to be around you for advice because they see that you care for them. God bless you all. What's happening now? Do I close with prayer or what? Oh, do I sing it by myself? <laughs>
Father in heaven, we're so thankful, Lord, that you are our God, so gracious, merciful and kind. Father, there are many who are here who, who shine their light brightly in the dark places, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for their testimonies, for their life. There are others who may be just a bit shy, Lord. But they are wanting to do something for you, Lord. I just pray that you'll give them the courage and the strength to pull that light from under the basket and set it on the lampstand, Lord, and just shine for you. Lord, I don't know the struggles or the difficulties that many are facing here in life. But I know in some way or another, Lord, each one of us has our struggles. So we come to you and we ask you, please help us. Deal with the sin in us, Lord. Forgive our sins and help us to love you more. Help us to be energized by your spirit to love people, Lord, from all walks of life, no matter who they are, that they may see your love through us and come and worship you. So, Father in heaven, dismiss us now. Guide us by your Spirit always. And may our hearts, Lord, always learn to love you. In Jesus' name, amen.